Welcome to Innovations in Education. I'm your host, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, Bill Cerrone. Here's a look at what's coming up. We'll introduce you to the new Santa Barbara County Teacher of the Year. You're gonna figure out, hmm, is this word a noun? A person, a place, a thing, or an animal? Or is it a verb? Some people hear Shakespeare and go, it's just old language. I wanna turn that on its head and remind you or make you think about the idea that Shakespeare is actually writing at a time when English is a, is a much younger language than it is now. Then we'll take a look at a UCSB program that is helping local students better understand Shakespeare. And we'll close the show with our calendar of educational events. Last May, Michelle Minetti Smith was named the 2017 Santa Barbara County Teacher of the Year. Let's visit Guadalupe to meet this outstanding teacher who represents so well all of the outstanding teachers and classrooms throughout Santa Barbara County. My name is Michelle Minetti Smith. I teach first grade at Mary Buren Elementary School. I've been teaching, this is my 21st year, and I teach in a developmental bilingual class. A developmental bilingual classroom is a classroom where students are working primarily in their language of Spanish in the first grade. In our classroom particularly, we work 70% in Spanish, 30% in English, and as students progress through the grade levels, the percentage of English increases. And the goal is that once students graduate from high school, that they take a test to prove that they are bilingual and biliterate and receive a seal of biliteracy on their diploma. We know that in our class, we practice two languages, Spanish and, and English. And today we're going to make some connections. In Spanish, we have learned all about sustantivos, words that name people, places, things, and animals. We've made that connection. And we've also learned about verbos, words that show us action. Right? So today, we're going to take that knowledge in Spanish and we're going to connect it in English. In English, we call the word sustantivos nouns. Can I hear everybody say that? Yes. Nouns. Yes, and here it is right up here. Nouns. Today, we're working on an English language development concept of nouns and verbs. The students had um, a lot of background knowledge because they had been studying them in Spanish, and I wanted to make that connection to them in English and give them that vocabulary that they could work with, knowing that they were called nouns and verbs in English, and students worked as pairs to sort um, various objects into the correct category. You're going to have some picture cards that have a word on them, kind of like mine. This one says igloo, ball, flamingo. You can use your English sounds to read the word, and you also have a picture clue to help you. And you're going to do a sort. You're going to figure out, hmm, is this word a noun? A person, a place, a thing, or an animal, or is it a verb? And to start your sort, you need the names of each one. So when I show it to you, can you read it to me, please? What is this one? Nouns. Nouns. Thank you. And how about this one? Verb. Verbs. So you need that up at the top of your table. And when Miss Hernandez and I have checked your groups... And if they're great, we're going to give you the thumbs up to write them on your paper. What are these? Verbs. Verbs and what are these? Nouns. Nouns. What's this one? Banana. Super. Ball. Ball. 
And look at this friend. Right. She's she's adding some numbers, right? Oh, numbers. Four plus two equals six. Is that an action? Yeah, let's move it over. That's okay. That's why we're doing it. Just making sure they're in the right spot. It has been very successful. It's exciting to see students be able to communicate in both languages, both verbally and written. And it's also exciting, especially in first grade, as students are reading um, in their primary language and then transitioning over to the English language. It's very, very exciting to open doors uh, for them in two languages, um, as well as for their parents, a great sense of pride. I was born in Santa Maria, raised here in Guadalupe. My family is currently in its fifth generation here. I happened to teach at the school that I attended as a student, as well as my father and my grandmother. Um, my grandmother on my maternal side was a teacher here in fifth grade for over 25 years. And uh, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher from a very young age. And as I graduated from college, I hoped to come back to my own community to teach, but wasn't sure if the opportunity would arise. And I was very fortunate that um, Guadalupe was looking for teachers. And when I came back to interview, I was interviewing with my former elementary school principal. And I've been here ever since. And it's been a, a great um, sense of coming home because I feel that I received such a great education here. Um, from so many wonderful teachers, including Mary Buren herself, who was my fifth grade teacher. I've been a lifelong reader, and being that my grandmother was a teacher, uh, education was very important in my family on both sides. And my parents always emphasized how important education was to my brother and myself. So having that combination of loving to read, loving school, loving my teachers, it was very easy that I knew from probably the age of six that I too wanted to be a teacher. You have some great brains right here that are full of nouns and verbs. I heard Daniel say drive. I heard Dominic say play. I heard... So winning uh, Santa Barbara County Teacher of the Year has certainly been a process went through the application process of writing essays on a variety of topics. And I, I share with people that it's not often after 20 years of teaching that you're reflecting on where you've been as a teacher and where you're going in the future. And that was a really great process that I really enjoyed taking that moment to kind of think back on where I started, where I've been, and where I'm going in the future as a teacher. And I knew that our county is made up of so many wonderful teachers, and I knew that the other finalists had to have been wonderful in their own right, and I respected that as well. And I just knew that whatever happened, happened. And then when I did ultimately receive the phone call that I had won, I was very humbled. I know that the county is made up of the cream of the crop when it comes to teachers. And I am humbled by that every day because I know that I work with teachers who are so amazing here at my own school as well as throughout the county. And it is very humbling. Um, and I always say that this has given me another opportunity to say thank you to all the people who've helped me get where I am today. Every. I'm going to carry the baby or carry the books. I truly think it's a blessing to do what I do, to work for the students I do and the parents I do. I'm very humbled every morning when I open the door and I see 24 shining smiles waiting for me outside and parents there greeting. I feel that it's um, a sense of giving back, first of all, to my school and my community uh, for so many wonderful things that they've given to me and my family. Uh, I love teaching the love of reading to my students. That's 
always something, you know, in first grade. Uh, there's always a huge emphasis on teaching the, the skills of reading, but I think something I've always taken a great deal of pride in is teaching my students the love of reading. Because not all students are going to be top readers reading at the highest level, but if you give those students the love of reading, it's going to carry them for the rest of their life and introducing new to literature and authors to them and empowering them as authors themselves during our writers, writers workshop, that is always something that I look forward to every single day. So writers workshop is a portion of our day where we're working on our writing skills and, and studying different authors and it's a, a workshop model where students are working in their own groups and we walk around and confer and, and meet with them and talk about writing goals. And at the end of each writer's workshop session, students sit up in front of the class in the author's chair and they read their stories to the rest of the class. And it's just that empowering thought that students are authors too and that they have stories to share. And that's a, a workshop model that we use here at our school. So my hopes for my students, um, first and foremost, is that they're lifelong learners, lifelong readers, and they pursue education and know that education opens many doors for them as well as their families. And another goal I have, uh, when I say goodbye to my students in June, it's never goodbye, it's um, I'll see you soon. Because I always tell them, I'll be your teacher forever. And my hope is that they'll come back and share exciting news or, or even if they have a question or a problem they need to solve. I try to always have an open door policy for them as well as their parents to come back. And that's a goal for them um, to always feel that comfort, that sense of connection to me that they can come back with anything that they have to share. Another goal, of course, is that they pursue that seal of biliteracy when they graduate from high school and that they pursue their, their studies in college and come back to share those with me. And um, I just wish them a lot of health and happiness and success in their future. UCSB's Department of Theater and Dance offers an outreach program called Shakespeare and Me. It provides local students with an opportunity to learn about Shakespeare. Let's take a look. Shakespeare's working on sounds that come from inside, a visceral response. His language was a very meaty, chewy, thick sound, right? So what we're going to be doing today is playing with the sounds of Shakespeare's language in, in small bite-sized chunks. I'm going to offer you some little pieces of paper. I'll, be talk, I'll just be throwing out lines. You'll repeat them back to me and play with them. We're going to explore the ways in which those sounds that you take into your mouth might affect your body to make you move. Last week when we were here, we did some playing around with Midsummer Night's Dream. Theseus was considered to be the lawgiver, the heroic uh, warrior king of Athens, ruled Athens supposedly a man of high intelligence, military might, great power, and uh, persuasive, persuasive capability, perhaps. She's saying these things for the first time. See what discoveries you're making in the, the way that this passion, this newfound interest in this other person, threatens to take away some of yourself. My name is Heather Stanford, and my title is Academic Coordinator, which means that I manage the programs I've been developing, which are the Shakespeare in the Schools programs. And I also am a lecturer. I taught an advanced acting class for the BA students in the theater department. Some people hear Shakespeare and go, it's just old language. I want to turn that on its head and remind you or make you think about the idea that Shakespeare is actually writing at a time when English is a, is a much younger language than it is now. Shakespeare's English is growing very rapidly. He's writing at a time when there really isn't a dictionary, there's no internet. People have to understand words they hear, how? How, they can't look it up. He's making up words right and left. He makes up thousands of words, at least 15 or 1800 words we still use today are things he first wrote in his plays. The title is Shakespeare and Me. I keep on wanting to emphasize the ways in which it's a personal encounter 
with the text as opposed to something that exists outside of yourself on the page over there, some idealized platonic idea of Hamlet, Ophelia, Laertes, um, that it's more about how do you, um, an 18-year-old, a 14-year-old, an 8-year-old, how do you digest the words on that page and, and connect to some ideas Shakespeare's putting out there for you, images, experiences of the characters, the story of the characters? I'd like to begin by reinforcing the idea that there is no such thing as Othello or Desdemona or Iago. There are some words on a page that we managed to edit and put together, and there are you people, and there are our voices and our bodies, and there is how those words affect you, and you, and you. That's all it is, and I want to make sure that you are, appreciate that you're important, and it's not your job to create the perfect Othello, Desdemona, or Iago, okay? Today, the fabulous Heather Stanford came up to work with my classes who are reading Macbeth and Othello. And she came to work with the classes to have them uh, act out various passages and have some physical, theatrical dynamism to their reading and their understanding of how to read Shakespeare. Okay, so while you're moving through the space, you're gonna be mindful of each other. Let's just begin slowly as if we're walking in slow motion. Just moving around, covering as much of this space as you possibly can, making sure you don't run into anyone or anything. Now look at a partner near you, any old partner will do, find someone to talk to and find that person, stand with him. Tis a pageant to keep us in false gaze. Tis a pageant to keep us in false gaze. So she does some warm-up exercises. There's uh, probably no clientele in the world more self-conscious than people who are in high school. And so kids are uh, uncomfortable breaking out of their familiar modes, especially in a class setting. But she does warm-up exercises with the kids that are playful and engaging, and it, she draws them right in. And she gives them various uh, exercises to get their bodies moving expressively, giving them permission to be playful. And that's my favorite part, is to see kids who are reading Shakespeare, and it is a slog for some. Um, to see them begin to really enjoy on a physical level what they're saying and then after she gets a level of comfort and trust and playfulness she'll start to integrate the Shakespearean language and by that time you're happy to put gestures with words and uh, as the kids said uh, when they were debriefing from one of the sessions I was really one of the kids just said I was really uncomfortable about coming to do this today but I have to admit it was really fun and they had a great time. To be completely honest, I came in a little apprehensive, a little nervous, um, but through the exercises and being involved with my other classmates, I learned that little by little and minute by minute, we all opened up and found new ways to express ourselves. The most challenging thing for me was probably um, interacting with those people that I don't really talk to as much and it just kind of going, getting, being more outgoing and putting myself out there a little bit more than I usually do in front of this group of people. I personally don't love Shakespeare. I can appreciate it, but I'm definitely not going to pick it up on my own free will and like read it by the fire or anything. Um, but I think it just developed my appreciation for Shakespeare even more in its a full body experience as opposed to just kind of a mental exercise. We are working essentially using something called archetypes. Looking around here, look at this. We have sovereign. Of course, you all know what a sovereign is. Queen or king, it's a leader, it's a ruler. Then over here we have warrior. So trickster. But it's someone who plays games. And then the last one over here is the carer, someone who's a caring figure. We kind of explored Shakespeare in like a different way than just reading the text, which made it easier to understand what's going on like in the characters' minds as well as like just Shakespeare's thought process when writing it. Today was an interesting day because we got to sort of um, experience Shakespeare in a more uh, natural way as it's kind of meant to be in his uh, performance art in a more uh, physical setting. Well, I think it's a good opportunity to work with someone who obviously has a lot of experience at the university level and uh, to see a, different si see a different side of Shakespeare and kind of uh, learn about things in a way that's more unorthodox that you don't usually get to do in school. It gave me a new outlook on how to read the characters and how to visualize the characters and how to analyze them. At this moment, not in your entire life, but right now, which one of these do you feel most represents you? Would you please go stand near the sign that most represents how you're feeling right now? I think it helped us to be able to identify 
um, the archetypes and help us not only identify like um, ourselves as an archetype, but also be able to recognize it in other characters and how other characters may have multiple archetypes. All right, so at least one line solo, and you can choose to say others, but use, you know, use the first 10 or 12 lines or so so everybody has a chance to say something plus group work, okay? And so I'm hoping that, first of all, the basic uh, workshop that I do is meant to help them associate theater, Shakespeare with theatricality, and therefore with playfulness, and with the notion that emotions can be large and language can be large and language can allow you to express those huge emotions that teenagers, as most of us are, but especially in adolescents, are just wrestling with and roiling with and give them a chance to say, there's language for this. It's not just, you don't have to just hit somebody. There are ways you can express all that's going on inside of you using language. And Shakespeare offers us that opportunity. Now, Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on a pace. Four happy days bringing in another moon, but oh, we think how slow this old moon swings. I put together a course for the BFA juniors, acting students, to help them see what it's like to be engaged in community education in Shakespeare in the schools program. So when the opportunity came up to offer a course here to teach some of the BFA students what it was like to do that outreach work, then I thought, well, I could also offer some scenes so that the students in the classroom have a chance to see people who are close to their own ages performing, mastering, embodying, playing with the language. Having these kids here who are trained and are so close in age to the high school and middle school students made it seem so accessible and so connectable, I think, for those middle school and high school students. And that's my, my thing. My thing is not so much that Shakespeare becomes, you know, they're all Shakespearean actors someday, but that they appreciate that they can themselves tackle all kinds of challenges uh, in terms of language and poetry and just theatricality, expressing themselves. And so seeing these students who have had the opportunity for a few years here to train their voices and bodies to be that elastic and that flexible and, and, and playful uh, seemed to me a great chance to share with the high school and middle school students all the possibilities of being more theatrical themselves. As a department, um, we are always looking for ways to invite people from the community to be a part of our curriculum. We are so thankful that we live in a place where we have even a UC in our backyard and we are able to utilize those resources. Heather has been instrumental in bringing Shakespeare to life in my eyes in the last two years. Uh, she comes with a lot of energy and a lot of new ideas and she shocks the students and is willing to work with the students and be flexible and pull them out of their comfort zones in very high pressure situations for them. They are very, um, you know, at times afraid of what their peers will think and she's able to just make them feel comfortable and at home and try new things and we are so grateful to, to have her be willing to come to San Marcos and other schools within the district to work with our students. Studying Shakespeare, it's always been like a little bit hard for me to understand, but, it, but seeing the, this group come out and like perform and it just kind of made me like understand like emotions that are going on throughout the play. I think the whole world of Shakespeare is like really interesting. It's just kind of hard to understand at first, but once you really get an idea of like what's going on and what the words mean, it's really something fascinating to kind of dive into. Oh, I thought it was really fun to get this opportunity, especially the fact that I got to volunteer and just be with them and be in the whole scene. Let's see what happens if we have Theseus and Hippolyta play a much, much more, more flirtatious romantic comedy version of this relationship. What was interesting is that we got to see a bunch of different interpretations of the scene. So the relationships between the characters, the way they said, the dialogue, the emotions, the actions they took, it all changed with each interpretation. And it was really interesting to see where it could go. And it made me realize that you could actually do the most insane, like craziest, wild thing with any interpretation. Heather's class is an opportunity to be able to uh, teach Shakespeare to high schoolers um, across Santa Barbara County. Uh, we've been as far up as San Inez and as far down as Carpinteria and uh, we've just uh, we've been given several opportunities to be able to, te uh, to teach and to be able to work directly with 
uh, the high schoolers and kind of standing in one case middle school as well and just be able to get them to embrace Shakespeare as um, as a fun and entertaining uh, as a fun and entertaining entity that it is it's it's been a really fun class so far. The sense of really listening and being there and present and today kids are always so they're on their phones, they're thinking about other things, talking to their friends. But when we're able to get a kid hooked on and they're listening and watching and trying all the things with you, they might not be doing it full out. But to know that they're risking themselves and putting themselves out there only allows them later in life to accept who they really are and hopefully, you know, try what they really love to do. And if it is theater, I'm glad that we were that stepping stone for them. And if it's not theater, hopefully they found out that, you know, it helps with their presence of who they are and how they walk and their attitude and things like that. And so I, I just think it's important that we keep arts and Shakespeare because it allows us to connect with humanity so much further than just a piece of text reading in a classroom together. Personally, I think it's very important because if I had had the exposure that we're giving them, I think I would have appreciated it very much because, I mean, I was very into that stuff when I was in high school and I never really got to see Shakespeare in performance and I never got to be exposed to that. But I also think aside from the people that are interested in theater, I think theater in general is such an incredible outlet for students. And then you go to school and you see the light that like comes out of these students and you see how much they appreciate your presence in that classroom and how much they appreciate that somebody's listening to them, that somebody wants to hear what they have to say, that somebody cares about how they're feeling. Not only does it introduce them to Shakespeare as not this intimidating language, but it also introduces them to the wider aspect of art and theater and what that means as far as their voices and what they can contribute to society. What I can take away from this experience is that I am a better teacher than I thought I was before this. I ha can command a room and still be fun, and I can be fun and educational, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Well, this work that we're doing is really important because, um, first off, Shakespeare is just incredible text, and the performance of Shakespeare is amazing. Uh, and I think that that's something that in high school you don't realize. And in high school, the arts are not given as much of a priority as other subjects, other aspects of education. Um, and we believe strongly that arts really changes lives. Let, I didn't understand that. Save from my glass. Today is a stage in our journey of uh, getting ready for our Shakespeare production in the spring. And we've done the work of picking the pieces and memorizing the pieces. And we've talked about iambic pentameter. And we've done a little work with phonetics in terms of pronunciation. And so uh, the students are ready to take it to the next level, which is to, to really personalize the performances of these pieces. And I thought no better person to bring in than Heather Stanford, who we worked with last year and, and my students adore. One of my goals is to find workshop chances to work with teachers themselves so that they can learn the techniques and use it in the classroom without relying totally on my being there. We hope you have enjoyed this program. We'll close now with our calendar of educational events. Thank you for joining us and we invite you to tune in next time for more innovations in education.